Last week I played Pong, which I argued was the first proper video game. Today I was meant to skip several years as I was under the illusion that people did nothing but play Pong for four years. However, I couldn't have been more wrong. With the launch of Pong, everybody wanted a piece of the video game action and a load of surprisingly complex games came out and have since almost been forgotten. The only problem with these early games is that, although basic, it's surprisingly hard to emulate them since they're not based around the same code or rules that now govern… stuff. Instead, emulators have to simulate all of the working parts of the system. Over at Adam's page, he has been working on an emulator named DICE since 2007. That's six years, and it requires a fairly hefty PC to run these simplest of games. Incredible. Keep up your good work, Adam. Thanks to you, it's guaranteed that these early gems will still be played in years to come. Anyway, on to the games. First up is Gotcha, a multiplayer chase game where a square must run around a continually changing maze to catch a cross. This is a surprisingly frantic game, and I can imagine people having hours of fun with it. There was a lot of controversy about it when it was released. Atari had obviously caught onto the idea that joysticks look a bit like willies, so decided to try and balance it out by releasing a female control system, where people got to control some pink bulges that represented breasts. I personally can't see why this didn't catch on. The game was clearly ahead of its time, and wasn't accepted for the groundbreaking cat and mouse experience that it clearly was. Shame. Space Race was another competitive two-player game, whereby you controlled spaceships as you travelled up the screen, avoiding the white-hot bits of space debris as you went. Or whatever those things were. Asteroids, maybe. The emulator, at least, includes a throttle feature, which I guess is kind of like hard mode. Once again, I think that this is far more interesting than Pong, but I guess it was hampered by requiring two players. Unless you wanted to play forever alone like I am. Lunar Lander was another arcade machine where you must battle against the controls to try and land a spaceship whilst running low on fuel. This is another game that has stood the test of time and is still playable to this day in a billion different Flash games. Unfortunately, the original version is difficult to find and even harder to get working, but imagine this but at low resolution, without animations, and all being green. And finally, we have Empire, which was on the arcade machine Plato. This is probably the most futuristic of all the games mentioned, as it's probably the first violence-based, multiplayer network shooter. It also seemed to be the first to have proper sequels and iterations, as you can see from this list here. It was also based on a 512 by 512 resolution screen, which was pretty damn good for the time. I was unfortunately unable to break into this elite and clearly very deep game, but it was worked on for years and had many different versions, and was even used in tournament play. Could this have been the very first LAN party must-have game? How come I haven't heard about it until now? So there you have it, 1973's must-have video games. I find it incredible that the gameplay mechanics of these games are still the staple rules for many of the games out today. It makes me wonder if these first few games have shaped all of those that came afterwards, and if in an alternative universe, other games were made first and we'd all be playing very abstract, obscure and different games today. The sad thing is, we'll never know. Next week I jump on to 1974. What goodies will await us there? Find out next week.